Hey everybody, what's up? Brian from Hands On Auto Training. Uh, end of day video, uh, August 4th, 2021. We got our U-Scope charging up. We got our Autel that's on the floor over there. That's getting charged up. Got our laptop charging up. You know it's the end of the day when all my batteries are going dead on everything, right? So today was a, a tough day, hot day. Uh, you're gonna hear me tell you about it, but whatever. It's over and I'm gonna go home. So today started out pretty good with a uh, 2011 Jeep uh, Liberty. The customer had put in a new tip -em. I told them to push down all the fuses, make sure they're all pushed down. They come in these little brackets when you buy a new tip -em. And uh, they said they did it, but of course they didn't. But somehow, usually uh, you'll just go push the fuses down and clear the codes and it's all good. Well, this, this vehicle ended up having to uh, get the seat weight sensors relearned for the OCSM. So we went ahead and did that procedure, got that taken care of, and we were all good there. The next job was a 2011 Chevy Cruze. And this vehicle, uh, the customer had called me on the phone, the technician called me on the phone asking a few questions uh, a week or so ago. And he was saying that his Noid pulse was weak, like he had a weak Noid pulse and that's why he was leaning towards the computer. And I told him, get a scope on it, check that. And I've seen this a couple other times where you get a Noid light that doesn't really blink very well. And this is a non-GDI, this is a standard injection turbo, the 1.4 uh, turbo on a cruise. And uh, I guess Noid lights don't light up brightly on these. I don't know, but he ended up uh, calling a computer, put a computer in it, we programmed the computer, of course we have a crank no start situation. Now something interesting here, just like I told you guys I think yesterday or the day before, I did a security learn, but the computer was setting a code saying that the security wasn't learned. It's because the vehicle didn't actually uh, exceed a certain RPM, it didn't see a crank start and run. Um, so we're still setting that security code, I think I have a picture of that I'm going to share with you here. Um, but basically ended up being contaminated fuel. I got my uh, Pico scope on there. We had injector pulse. Uh, I was confused at first because there are a couple uh, differing wiring diagrams for this vehicle. So once we got the right wiring diagram, got the scope on there, we had a good injector pattern. I could see the pintle bump. I'm ha always happy with that. And then uh, we took the fuel pressure with the WPS and the fuel pressure was spot on, took a fuel sample, and it felt oily on my hands. Like you get it in your fingers and it just stay oily. If you spill it on the floor, it would just sit there in a puddle and it'd be slippery. Usually you spill some gas on the floor, it'll be slippery and it'll evaporate in a few minutes or something. But this would, uh, maybe a few seconds should I say, this would just go on the floor and just sit there for, it wouldn't go away. So we got an alternate fuel source, uh, a motor vac machine hooked it that up. And it ran just fine. So that one was good to go. Uh, then we did a fuel pump control module on a, I think it was a 2009 Chevy Silverado. That was gravy train, no problem there. Then we get to the job that I'm just leaving now, and I've been here for probably about two and a half hours, and I got a big fat zero for it. Okay, I got nothing here. Um, the reason is, is if I can't uh, have a conclusive diagnosis for my customers, I don't charge them anything. And this is a fantastic customer of mine. You know, I'll be back to program a computer. I called the computer. We'll see what happens. This is a, I think it was a uh, Infinity QX45. I forget what year it was. I want to say 05 or 03. It's an older one. Um, but long story short, they had a used engine put in. The vehicle was running, and then it started misfiring. It had a glowing red converter, according to one of the technicians, and then it smoked a uh, smoked a, a coil. It actually melted a coil. All these things happened. I don't know exactly what's going on here. I'm kind of hesitant about the computer because I think if we put a computer in there, we might fry the new computer. I can't prove that. And uh, well, anyways, I spent a lot of time scope testing all kinds of stuff. One thing I will tell you, the standard stuff does apply. We got a CAN bus, okay? We know the CAN bus, generally speaking, most CAN buses have the two 120 ohm resistors, should be reading 60 when they're in peril. And on this vehicle, I did have to uh, disconnect the battery to get those, uh, uh, get the 60 ohms at uh, the DLC pin six and 14. So that was good, I'm happy about that. And then I went to the computer and started checking powers and grounds, I did all that. Now the one thing I'm thinking in my head that may be a problem, I gotta tell you, my arm's getting tired holding this phone, I can't do it like this. This is for future reference, I won't do it this way. Uh, the one thing I'll tell you I'm concerned with is if there's some shorted uh, circuits if that converter was glowing red, did something short out in the O2 sensor circuit or in a harness somewhere, I was spending some time inspecting around. What if that's going to take out the new computer? Or should I say, we're going to use one. I told them don't get a new one. I just want to get communication back. So, guys, that was my day in a nutshell. 
I hope it's not too long and drawn out for you. I hope you're all doing well. Thanks a lot for bearing with me with this cold I'm dealing with. And uh, have a great day. I'm going home.